Welcome to the Office of Undergraduate Research Education Series. We are today talking about presenting at a national conference. And the co-presenters are myself, Dr. Annie Isabel Fukushima, and I'm joined by Ava Peitz, who is an undergraduate research leader. Um, so we want to welcome you all um, to this education series event. Just as a friendly reminder, um, if you are an undergraduate research researcher who is a Europe scholar, if you can please go ahead and fill out um, the evaluation form. Uh, this will ensure that you receive the very deserved credit for being a Europe scholar and for also attending. If you all want to learn more about our education series, you can visit us at our.utah.edu backslash UREs. A little bit about the Office of Undergraduate Research. Our mission is to facilitate and promote undergraduate student faculty collaborative research and creative works in all disciplines throughout the University of Utah campus. In recognition that excellence requires diversity, we pursue this mission through equitable programming that promotes diverse representation and social justice. We also want to acknowledge that this land, which is named for the Ute tribe, is the traditional and ancestral homeland of the Shoshone, Paiute, Goshute, and Ute tribes. The University of Utah recognizes and respects the enduring relationships that exist between many indigenous peoples and their traditional homelands. Oops, sorry. Getting ahead of myself, folks. Um, we respect sovereign relationships between tribe states and the federal government, and we affirm the University of Utah's commitment to a partnership with Native nations and urban Indian communities through research, education, and community outreach activities. So I'm Dr. Annie Sabel Fukushima. I am the Associate Dean of Undergraduate Studies and the Director of the Office of Undergraduate Research. I'm joined by Ava. Ava, do you wanna just quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm Ava. I am an undergraduate research leader working under Dr. Fukushima. Um, I'm a third year student, third year undergrad at the U right now, and I'm studying political science and psychology. Yeah, and, and Ava's also our IRB specialist, so um, we're not here to talk about that, but if that ever comes up, you're welcome to ask that. Um, so welcome, Ava. We're happy to be here. So we're just going to get into why should you present at a conference. Presenting at a conference increases self-efficacy. Albert Bandura um, discusses self-efficacy as a belief in one's capacity. And so we know that for when students oftentimes participate in research activities, which include presenting research, they oftentimes have a better sense of um, and stronger beliefs in their capabilities. It also is something that if you're interested in graduate school, we know that students who participate in professional activities like presenting research, they are more likely to aspire towards graduate studies. And so there is definitely a correlation there. And so in general, we know that presenting at conference is a good. We also know that when we look at our students, uh, we do and we do semester poster evaluations, is that what we find is that when our students participate in uh, presenting in research, that um, they show a mastery of identifying, util utilizing previous research. They're able to articulate research question, identify appropriate methods, and um, majority of our students are able to present research effectively. They've mastered that, but you can only master something that you've been practicing. And we know for sure that when you participate in national conferences, it is a great way to um, practice and master um, the way that you're speaking um, about research. Here are some examples of national conferences. There's the IRA, the American Educational Research Association. I attend the American Sociological Association. I also attend the American Studies Association. There's also the annual biomedical research conference for minority students, Law and Society, National Association for Women's Studies, National Academy of Engineering, National Medical Association. This is not a comprehensive list. There are many national conferences that you can participate in. And for all of you, um, or for many of you who are joining us today, you're here because you are actually joining NCUR. Not all of you are, maybe you're here for other conferences you're attending, um, but NCUR is the National Conference on Undergraduate Research. The first conference was held at University of North Carolina um, in 1987, and it had 400 participants that came from across the country. So NCUR is dedicated to promoting undergraduate research, scholarship, and creative activity in all fields. And since it 
its early beginnings of 1987 of 400 students, it now hosts 3,500 to 4,000 students from across the globe who present their research through posters, oral presentations, visual arts, and performances. Their faculty mentors might also attend this conference. And somebody asked a question about um, how is the national conference different from UCUR? Well, we just had the Utah Conference on Undergraduate Research, UCUR, and this was wonderful because it was a statewide conference. We brought students from across the state, 640 undergraduate researchers from across the state of Utah to present. Um, and so that is more of a local state conference. Um, and and for NCUR, it is a national one. So you're going to get students who are from all kinds of universities, from community colleges um, to um, private schools, uh, to state universities, to flagship universities like the University of Utah. So those students are coming from all over the place. NCUR is a great way to connect with those uh, many folks. So now we're going to kind of get at the nuts and bolts of presenting at a conference, and I'm going to uh, punt it over to uh, my colleague and co-presenter Ava, who's going to talk about before the conference. And so we'll go ahead and have Ava share. Absolutely. So first and foremost, um, congratulations if you're presenting at a national conference, and I hope that um, if, if that's you, you're feeling excited. Um, and I feel I hope that you feel supported, supported by the Office of Undergraduate Research and also supported by your mentor. So um, if you're conducting research underneath a mentor, which is probably very likely here at the University of Utah, uh, that mentor is going to be there to promote and support your participation in your conference. So they're going to be there every step of the way, and you should rely on your mentor to make sure that your presentation is up to their expectations. So making sure that you're representing your research correctly, making sure that you're representing your lab correctly, and just making sure that you feel as prepared as possible to speak about these things that hopefully you feel pretty passionate about, you know, hopefully you feel good about your research. So um, coming with uh, presenting, I think a lot of us feel I know that I feel a good amount of anxiety before I produce, especially in front of people that I don't know. So I think that it's it's so wonderful if you can take advantage of, of your lab or your mentor in terms of um, pr practicing with them. That's a really good way to, pr to prepare to reduce your anxiety and do what you need to do. You know, take a couple of breaths, ground yourself, go through your presentation and, and just know that when you're presenting in a conference, everybody there is feeling the same way that you are. Everybody there is, is there to share um, the way that you are. You're there to learn, you're there to share. So um, take those measures to reduce your own anxiety before you present at the conference. So just to hop in a little bit about uh, preparing your poster or your oral presentation or whatever you'd like to do. Um, we have some undergraduate uh, research education series about these things. Um, so if you wanna go on to the Office of Undergraduate Research website, we have a lot more resources. Um, but specifically at a national conference, you might be doing more oral sessions. Um, so like I said, if, it, if it, you might wanna uh, work with your mentor to practice your presentation, practice in front of your roommates, your friends, et cetera. Um, and then if you're doing a poster, you want to confirm how you're going to transport your poster materials, you know, like you want to make sure that you can take them on the airplane if you're, if you're um, flying. And then you just also want to be mindful of your time. So I don't, if you've presented at a conference before, you've, um, or been to a conference, uh, you probably see that there's poster sessions, there's oral sessions. So oral is when somebody stands up in front and gives a research speech, and then they take questions. Posters are a little bit more interactive where people are coming and going and, and you're giving your little spiel at your poster. And you just want to be mindful of people's time, right? Because they're there to learn, you're there to learn. Um, you want to make sure that you're staying within the realm of your time if you're giving an oral presentation and not talking for 30 minutes about the intricacies of your work if you're doing a poster session. So that's one way you can remain respectful of yourself and others at a conference to get the most out of, a, out of an experience. And let's go ahead to the next slide. Thank you. Okay, awesome. So um, conferences, especially national conferences, are a really fantastic time to network, right? Because you have every opportunity to network on campus because you might see people in the in your lab, you might see people in the dining hall, um, but you're not going to be able to have those connections across schools unless you have an opportunity such as this, which is super wonderful. So you want to take advantage of that and find peer connections. So um, I believe if you are attending NCUR, you can join a, micro, a Microsoft Teams channel um, that the Office of Undergraduate Research provides. So you can connect with other participants that are going to NCUR as well. Maybe find a roommate, 
um, maybe figure out who you're going to go to lunch with some days. Um, and then also it's really good to ask your PI if they have any connections who have students attending. I know that um, when I've presented at a it was an international conference in the past. My PI actually made a real effort to have us connect to another lab so that we could talk um, amongst the lab, have another connection there and feel more comfortable being in that space. So it's also good to research ahead of time. Who's gonna be there? Who's gonna be presenting? What kind of information can I learn? You wanna, if you can, reach out to faculty or other presenters that are doing research in your areas of interest. So. You want to make sure that when you're doing this, that you're respectful in your communication. So um, faculty are normally very receptive if you send an email, um, but this email needs to be of a certain caliber, obviously. And you also want to reference that you're reaching out to the right faculty member. Make sure that their first and last name is right. Um, pay attention to their detail and their credentials before you reach out to the wrong professor. So on the next slide, I've put together a little template of what that communication might look like before the conference. So you wanna introduce yourself, um, a little bit about what you're studying, a little bit about why you're interested in reaching out to them. I saw that you'll be presenting your research. I'm planning to attend your presentation. I'm excited to learn more about your work. And then, you know, saying a little bit specifically about your work. Now, if you'd like to connect with them specifically at the conference, maybe take 15 minutes to meet with them, if that's something that you're gonna plan in your itinerary, um, you can ask for that very politely. Um, you can ask if they have time in their schedule to meet with you. And remember, they might say no, and that's not your fault, that's okay. It's always good to ask. Dr. Fukushima, do you have something to add? No, no, just keep going, I'm just preparing myself. Okay. Wonderful, okay, and yes, remember that this is a template. Um, Make sure to tailor it to your own specialization. You know, a lot of professors will kind of skip over or faculty members will have to skip over template emails because there's no personality in there. They don't know who you are. So let's go ahead to the next slide. Wonderful. Okay, so importantly, when you're presenting at a conference, you want to look like you you want to be there, right? So um, you want to make sure that you know the dress standards of the conference, um, and you want to make sure that you also are bringing clothes that you can see the town in. So um, whether it's business casual, uh, whether the conference is office wear, et cetera, you probably don't want to show up in flip-flops. And um, I'm going to have Dr. Fukushima take over a little bit for this on specifics of professional dress standards. Yeah, it really depends um, uh, on your field expectations. I know that we have colleagues who might be in certain fields, like I don't want to make assumptions, but I know that maybe in fields like um, engineering and science, maybe they tend to be more on the casual side. You don't want to look like you've overdressed um, up because then they may have certain perceptions of somebody who is too dressed up. Um, but if you do dress up and you're noticing everyone else is a little bit more casual, you know what, just own it. Um, that's what that's what my uh, sentiment is in general. Um, it it is better to be um, dressed up than underdressed, um, but it's up to you. Find out from your mentor, what do other people dress like? What is a common standard? Um, they'll let you know. Um, I know that in certain fields like um, anthropology, it's all about the scarves. You have to have some of these really awesome scarves. And so really it just depends on fields. Consult your mentor and all of that. Other things uh, you might want to think about is, um, is that the part you want me to share, Eva, or did you want to continue on it? I just bopping in about that. Yeah. No, absolutely. You're welcome to continue. I'm also happy to. Yeah, go ahead. Take it over. Okay, wonderful. So um, other than that, that dress, those dress standards, like I said, you want to bring some casual clothes so you can hopefully see the place where you're staying. I was fortunate enough to present at a conference in Hawaii. So I did some really cool sightseeing. I had to bring a bathing suit. Um, but you also want to bring uh, your ID. You want to bring um, maybe some extra money and you want to make sure that you're going to bring it in a container that you can carry with you that you're going to keep safe. Um, and then you want to plan your travel and lodging adequately as well. Obviously, if you're leaving the country, you should bring your passport, etc. Um, and then you can always talk to your mentor about specifics about this kind of travel, especially if your mentor is going with you. Um, but if they're not, you can still check with them, etc. So um, one really, really important thing is funding your travel and funding your participation. So um, some of you might be aware of the Office of Undergraduate Research's small um, and travel grants opportunities. Um, the link for that is uh, on our website and I believe that maybe we can put it in the chat. I think Shelly is in the chat. Shelly might be able to put that link in there for us. 
Other ways that you might be able to find funding for your travel are through ASUU. Um, your department might have some funding available. I was fortunate enough that my lab was funding me um, when I was traveling to a conference. That is not the case for everybody. So it's good to be aware of all of your resources and there are more resources on our website. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, uh, if your lodging um, is not provided by the conference, you can always reach out to those peer connections that you know from the you that are coming, or if you are connected to other people from other institutions by your PI, um, you can always room with those peer connections to cut down on costs and also to have that really wonderful um, bonding opportunity. Let's head to the next slide. Beautiful. Okay, so really importantly, you want to get the most out of this presentation opportunity. You're putting a lot of effort into it. You're putting a lot of probably your funds into it um, and your time as well. So you want to pre-plan your itinerary to get the most out of this experience. Um, I strongly recommend that you schedule in the keynote speech or like the, the presidential remarks speech. So you know, that's going to give you a really great sense of where the field is now. So if you're presenting at a, um, a, a conference like anchor, um, you're probably going to get a speech more like how how is the how is undergraduate research going across the country, etc. Um, but if you're presenting at a disciplinary specific conference, you'll get a keynote speaker that's going to talk about where the field is and um, some really important stuff in the field. You want to know that, you know, you're in the field, you want to understand where the field is. Um, and you want to look into the rest of the programming as well. Sign up for relevant presentations, sign up for relevant postering sessions, um, try to hit tabling events if you can. And also, of course, sign up for mixers if possible. You want to meet the people that you're presenting with and network. Um, it's a great opportunity to make connections and network, network, network. So um, also importantly, we talked a little bit about uh, signing up for um, all of these events that are that are conference specific but if you can in an area that you're traveling to sign up for local graduate school visit activities um see what kind of the academics in the area are offering and then um as we mentioned before it's always a great idea to connect with faculty or other presenters that are in your area of interest let's go ahead and move on Great. Um, thanks so much for that, Eva. Um, I'm going to also just kind of offer some, um, you know, pre-reflection, pre-conference reflections. That was really great, Eva, that you pulled that together. I know that one of the things that um, students oftentimes um, might not be thinking about, um, I know there was a question um, that was submitted about the difference between oral and poster presentation. Ava did a nice job of framing what that is. Um, and so I think that one of the things you might really want to think about, though, is security and backing up your content. Um, so what happens if your poster gets damaged or what happens if you um, lose your laptop or you drop it or something breaks? You really should always back up this content um, because oftentimes in many places, I shouldn't say all because I have traveled to places where they didn't have this, uh, but many places will have somewhere where you can actually print out a new poster if that's required. There might be a local uh, FedEx Kinko's or FedEx office is now called um, or some kind of print shop. Like, um, And so just, you know, that's something you should uh, make sure you back up in a cloud that you can access wherever you may be traveling. Um, I think that one of the things you might also want to think about is where and when you print your notes. Um, do you want to take that with you, bring it on the plane with you, review that um, and check it out, make sure you feel really confident in what you're presenting. If you don't uh, print it out before you um, go on the plane, then are you going to print it out locally somewhere? Um, I think that having your notes on the phone, uh, you may find it's hard to see, hard to read. I tend to be more of a printout person, um, but I know for my friends in sustainability, they may have heart palpitations of all that paper we may be wasting. Um, and so just think about where are those notes going to be that you can easily access um, for the presentation. Some of the things we also wanted to check in about was um, pre-safety, um, um, you know, kind of thinking about safety and travel. Um, as Ava um, talked about is, um, you know, make sure you have your ID. One of the things you might want to double check is, is your ID up to date? Uh, one of the worst things is to have is to travel and find out that you have an expired ID. Um, unless if you are like one of those um, global trotting travelers who is, um, you know, using their retina, I just travels through the, uh, you know, airport system with, 
smooth, um, you know, uh, clear, um, you know, it might be really hard to travel if you don't have your ID. So make sure that's up to date. You can also make sure you have a copy of it in a cloud that if in case something happens, I know when I've done international travels, I always have a backup version of my ID in case if something happens to me. Um, are you insured for travel? That's something you should definitely make sure. Check in with your um, insurance, your university insurance. Um, and then also you can always check in with your mentor or follow up with the office of where do you find that information for travel and insurance. We can always share that information with you. Um, double check your bank knows that you're traveling. I know it seems like it's not a big deal, but the worst thing to have happen is you need to pay for food and your card's not working because they think somebody has stolen it because you are now out of state and are making purchases that you have historically not made. So make sure you update your bank card, uh, bank knowing with the travel plans. Um, and another thing that's important is do people know you're traveling? Have you checked in with loved ones or family or friends so that they know that you are somebody who's going somewhere so they don't worry about you and they know when you arrive somewhere and when you're coming back. Um, you know, little things um, that I like to do before I travel is I like to plan how I'll get to and from the airport to the conference. I map things. I do walk distance. I try to really check out all that very specific things um, because you may be surprised at actually where your hotel is, maybe in an area that's not very walkable. And then that means then you'll have to find other plans, whether it's using Uber or Lyft to make your way um, over to a conference. Um, and uh, the other thing is, uh, if you uh, reach out, uh, who do you reach out if something goes awry? That's something that you maybe want to make sure that you have that contact list. One of the things I was just talking with somebody about is, do you all memorize phone numbers? Or do you always just keep it on your phone? If you don't memorize those phone numbers, what happens if your phone disappears? How do you know who to call? Where is that information? How do you access it? So that's something uh, to think about. Um, and with regards, I know that there was um, some questions around paying for travel. Actually, Ava, that's not correct. So we'll have Cindy Greaves go ahead and connect with those students um, about any kinds of questions around travel. Uh, somebody asked, can uh, you apply for travel and small grants? Not travel and small grants. We have a separate thing uh, for students who are traveling to NCUR. So please connect with Cindy Greaves if you have questions about covering your travel expenses and registration. Uh, thank you, Jude, for dropping in that email. The other thing I want to make sure that you all think about is that, you know, one of the things I like to say is if nobody knows it's happening, it's not happening. Um, and so it's really important to the market that you are presenting. So please make sure you share on social about the um, about your uh, conference presentation. And for some reason, it won't. Let me go back. There we go. So share and communicate um, on social, communicate to your professors that you're traveling, share on your LinkedIn. Uh, people can't attend your talk if they don't know it's happening. Invite other researchers. So as Ava said, connect with them. You can connect with them at the conference. You can also invite them to attend your talk and also attend theirs. Um, and that's just a mutual way to build community of researchers doing shared uh, research or have shared interests. Other things to think about is what do you know about the cultural context of the place that you're traveling to? I know you uh, for national conferences, you're thinking it's another state. Hey, our states have very different cultures. When I think about Utah, the culture of Utah, very different uh, from Wisconsin, very different from New Orleans. Um, and so really think about that cultural context. What is it famous for? Uh, what are the norms of that cultural context? You don't wanna come across as rude. So look into that if you can, check it out and then visit those places that are awesome and locally famous. So now we're going to transition into attending the conference. And so I'm going to punt it over to Ava, who's going to talk a little bit more about that. Yes, thank you so much. And so sorry for my error. Um, I corrected myself in the chat. Sorry, everybody. Um, so as we mentioned um, earlier, it's going to be super important for you to build your itiner in itinerary and you want to pick your sessions super wisely, right? Um, making sure that you can um, have a healthy mix of spending time with people that you're coming with and spending time with people that you know, and also networking and, and, and strengthening um, some new connections. So um, I always encourage people to take initiative. It, it's great to say yes to invitations as much as possible make lunch and dinner plans um, ask people to to you know like have a chat with you and ask lots of questions um I think that a really good rule of thumb in these kinds of situations is that you want to be the person who's listening. Um, if you can, in a conversation, always position yourself as the one who's asking questions, who's eager to learn, um, who's who's taking all of these new things in and trying to build connections with your already existing knowledge. That's going to be super helpful in strengthening your, your networking connections. Um, and then I also really encourage engaging with presentations. So um, when I presented, I presented at Pacific 
Chem in um, 2021, which is an international conference. Um, it's a chemistry conference. And my PI said that each of us in her lab um, needed to come up with a question at every session that we attended. And whether or not we were able to ask those questions, we would have to send those questions to her to show that we were actively engaged. Um, and whether or not your PI does something like this, I think it's a great idea to formulate and at least try to ask a question at every session, every poster presentation, or every panel that you attend. And always note these questions. Even if you don't have to send them somewhere, you should always, always note them because then you can save them for later if you're going to follow up with the presenter, which I'll get into a little bit, but I highly recommend that you do. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, all Beautiful. right. So it's uh, me again. Um, and so now we're thinking about during the conference, some of the things that I want to make sure that you all are aware of. Um, and um, it's always good to know the resources that are available to you. Um, I know that um, we don't want to think of the worst case scenario that happens when we travel, but it is important to be prepared and to know that there are resources. Many of us may travel and not experience bad things. Um, in the many conferences I've been to, I've had really good experiences um, overall. Um, but I want to make sure that as students, you are prepared to know that there are resources available to you should things go awry. So one of the things you should know is that we do have campus Title IX resources. Title IX is a resource for anybody who's experienced discrimination, sexual, sexual assault, or some other kind of form of violence. Um, if you experience something while you are traveling, I really encourage you to reach out to Title IX. They can uh, support students um, with resources. And so even if it happens not on campus, because you are a student at the University of Utah, you should know that your Title IX resources and the, the staff that work there really want to support you and make sure that you are supported in your academics here at the U. The other thing that we want to make sure is that, as Ava pointed out earlier, is Sometimes we experience things that we call pressure or anxiety or other kinds of stress. If you're experiencing any kind of pressure or it's getting to the realm of it's no longer just pressure, but it's feeling like it is a stress or anxiety producing, then I really encourage you to connect with mental health resources. These are resources available for you even as you travel. Your mentor is a resource for you, of course, and we also want you to know that the Office of Undergraduate Research is a resource for you as well, so you can always reach out to us. The other things that to keep in mind is that if violence or theft or other kinds of crisis happen, um, it, it may happen, it may not happen. The hope is it doesn't happen, but should these kinds of things happen, uh, one of those in the education series, there is this COVID-19 uh, researching in a pandemic, and the reason why I'm sharing that is because they literally talk about what they did when and they uh, were in an environmental um, catastrophe. Like literally there was something going wrong. There was an environmental crisis that was happening while they were trying to travel for research. Um, and I think they gave some really good strategies on what you might do if you're experiencing crisis while research. So crisis can happen in many forms. Um, it can be individual crises to things that are really out of your control that are societal. And so we just want you to know that there are um, uh, resources available for you. The other thing that I want us to uh, encourage you to think about is, um, I'm just going to share some examples from my own experience, is that, um, so Ava earlier talked about meeting with uh, folks um, and planning for that and connecting with them. Um, and I did that. I remember there was a professor, um, and at the time I was um, also a colleague, but they were much more distinguished than I am. And so I just felt so excited to meet with this colleague. I was early in my academics and I met with them. We had coffee and they were just so kind and just were like, yeah, how can I support you? Um, I think it's really wonderful to meet with folks. Um, you never know if they have time or are willing to meet with you. It doesn't hurt to reach out. I do find that just reaching out to people also lets them know about your research and interest. So even if they don't have time to meet up with you, they may be interested in the work that you are doing. And so you are now on their radar. Um, I think that one thing I just wanted to share is that when you go to uh, different uh, conference sites, the, some of the things you might want to look into is not only the people to connect with, but the resources to connect with. So one of the things that I did when I went to a conference that was in no less in New Orleans is that I went to research archive at Tulane. Uh, it was important for me to learn more about Asian migration patterns there and I thought it'd be so cool to check out their archive. Um, and so really there's a lot of um, research resources um, in people but there's also actual institutional resources at the sites that you're visiting. So take advantage of those opportunities. You may not for a while have a chance to get back to that site to check out that research site. 
Um, one thing I want to remind folks, though, is that you should think about research. Travel is also fun. So one of the things that I'm notorious for, known for, is for eating my way through a city. I do find it really important to find the best food places to check out that are they're famous for. Um, and you should, you know, if you um, apply, if you have resources um, or, you know, um, need resources, you should connect with your mentor, your department about getting resources that will fund what we call per diem. So your, your lunches and your meals. Um, and so really, um, check that out. I also have gone on ghost tours. I've checked out museums. So really think about this context of when you're at a, a place is also is a time to also have fun, you know, and connect with people through fun things. Um, and so now we're going to head into the third part of this presentation. So we are just really making good time here where we're going to now talk about, okay, you've gone, you've prepared for the conference, you've gone to the conference, and now what do you do after the conference? And we'll open it up for Q&A um, at the end. And so now I'm going to punt it over to Ava, who's going to tell us a little bit more about what it is like to what you should be doing after the conference. Yeah, absolutely. So um, if your mentor or your PI didn't attend the conference with you, you should absolutely, first and foremost, tell them how it went. Um, they, they're they super excited that you went, most likely, um, and they probably really want to hear about your presentations or what you were able to do or, or some interesting things that you learned. Definitely schedule a meeting with them if possible and tell them about how it went. Um, and I touched on this earlier. But I always recommend that you follow up with your co-presenters if you're presenting an oral session with somebody else um, or co-panelists or somebody who moderated the session that you participated in um, and uh, your peer connections that you've created from mixers or social events. So anybody that you met that you had a conversation with one on one, you should always follow up with. Um, and invite them to connect on LinkedIn or um, other social media platforms of your choice if you have shared interests and shared um, research goals. They're a really good connection for you to have in the future. And maybe if you attend a conference within the same disciplinary realm, you can go ahead and meet up with them again, and then you have a great connection in your field. So. Um, I touched on this a little bit, but it's good to just think about, you know, why we want to stay connected with folks, even if it was just a short interaction, um, and then who specifically you decide to stay connected with, because um, you want to grow your professional network, and you want to make sure that you know uh, that you're presenting yourself as somebody in the field who cares about connection and who cares about the progress of the field, and that happens through collaboration, right? Um, and you should also follow up with presenters um, and professors that led relevant sessions to you or provided specific mentorship to you. So I've provided another uh, couple templates. Um, and just a reminder, again, that these are templates. You should always follow professional standards and etiquette, addressing them based on what they've um, preferred to be addressed by in the past. So if you attended their presentation, um, you can go ahead and send an email such as this, where you say a little bit about yourself, I got to attend your presentation at this conference. Um, I'm currently conducting this research, so I found this aspect of your research super interesting. Um, hopefully you asked them a question if you could, so you can go ahead and call their attention back to that. I asked you about this, this, and this, and I really appreciated your response about this, this, and this. Thank you for such an informative presentation. Thank you for your time, what have you. Um, and then sign off respectfully. Um, another option, let's go to the next slide. Thank you. One other option is if you met with them during the conference, you can thank them for taking the time to connect with you during said conference. I really appreciated that you shared specific information with me. Um, and obviously you would say that specific information. I, I appreciate that you shared X, Y, and Z. Um, I'm definitely gonna keep that in mind in my future research. Um, your insight was so helpful, whatever they provided insight on. Um, again, reiterate that their mentorship was super meaningful and um, if, if, if it's relevant or prudent, you can use this email to also schedule up a follow-up meeting, um, but use your discretion, obviously, because these are very busy people. We're all very busy, but, um, and let's go ahead to the next slide. I think those are the, the templates that I had. And of course, this will be recorded if you want to go back and look at those. Great. So one of the things we just want to emphasize is that when you are after a conference, um, you know, it's really important that you reflect on the research process. Um, if you have a journal or notes or something that you can think about um, after the conference presentation, like really reflect on it. How did it go? I'm not saying be hard on yourself, but one of the things is that as academics, we're always um, growing, we're always improving over time, right? Um, we're always evolving. Um, and so think about what were the questions that came up, did it raise some things about your own research that you think you need to start 
accounting for? So were there questions that are common questions that were coming up that you're like, you know what, I really need to start addressing those questions in my research? Um, or um, is it about communication? So I need to start rethinking how I'm communicating because maybe people are misunderstanding the goal of my research and um, that's not my intention. So let's rethink strategy. Um, and so you can learn a lot by going to conferences and presenting. And so, but in order to learn a lot, you have to reflect on that. So reflect on the exchanges and conversations that you've had, whether it was in small um, group discussions to when you were presenting. I think that one of the things that's really important to do is also reshare. So tell people about what you did afterwards, right? Reflect on it, post about it, um, share what went well, um, and then tag your friends if you have some photos, especially those new friends that you made um, during the conference. I think that one of the things that you really want to do is revisit the information learned to strengthen your own research agenda. So you've attended all these other sessions. What did you learn from them? Has it actually really helped you to think about, is there scholarly um, interlocutors that you've not been engaging with, but now after attending a session, you should be reading this work. You're like, you know what? Somebody used a framework that was super cool. I wanna know about that go read about it, right? You've heard a presentation, but that's not sufficient, right? To be very rigorous about what you know about it. So go read about it, find out more about it and deepen your own research um, interlocutors that way. So reflect, reshare, revisit. One of the things that's really important for the Office of Undergraduate Research is that you also publish your research. And so we do have a journal, we've revamped it where it, it's now currently indexed. It's also searchable. Um, and so it's a, it's a, wonderful platform that we've been using um, that we encourage you to submit to the journal. So if you visit our journal uh, website, you'll find that there's great content. Um, we publish uh, from student abstracts to uh, full length articles, to creative pieces, to traditional research articles. Um, and so it's a whole gamut of research that is being published in range. And we wanna invite you to submit yours, um, presentations or something that you've done, like whether it is, um, yeah, uh, works in progress. Um, so you continue to have life with your research. And so that's just a little bit about that. So we just want to remind folks about publishing opportunities. Another thing that we want to share is that there is post-conference resources. So make sure you put this in your resume. Don't forget to list that you presented at this conference. There's different traditions. And so maybe some of you are now moving towards CV, so the curriculum vitae. The difference between a resume and a CV is that the CV lists literally everything. That is why your professors have like 100 page CVs. And it's okay, don't worry if yours isn't there yet. It's because you're early in your academics, it will get there, right? You'll get just as long at some point. Um, the resume really is uh, one to two pages. It's very much formulaic. No one's going to spend a lot of time reading everything. You're not going to stuff everything in there. You want to hit those high points. Um, and so depending on whether you're using a resume or a CV, uh, you know, there are some resources um, about translating research into a resume um, that was also an education series. We also want to remind you that these opportunities of presenting and doing research is something you can also leverage for industry if you're somebody who wants to go beyond the academy and publish your research. If you're publishing your research, there is also some resources on doing this. There's a session um, that is uh, coming up um, and Shelly uh, will share that link as well. Um, so we want to encourage you to um, join us at that event. There's a ton of education series. Um, but before we have you evaluate the event, um, I know that there was a question. So I'm going to actually um, go into a discussion mode. Um, is that I know that there was a question that came up from somebody um, and I want to make sure that we answer this question as well as open it up to other questions is somebody asked us, what would be the trade off of different presentation formats, poster or oral? Um, so as um, Ava shared, is they're just very different genres of presenting. Uh, when you do a poster presentation, you're literally, um, it is literally sometimes people are just like, they are just zooming by. You have two minutes, maybe even less, to say everything about your research. So you really need that elevator pitch and that visual to pull them in so that they can get something very quickly. What's been very popular is for people to do QR codes so then they can just do a QR code and move on to the next thing so they can go and take something from your presentation. Um, you can even do handouts. I've had students who provided postcards. So as people were coming in their poster presentation, they were giving them something because they knew those people were walking away, right? Uh, with an oral presentation, it's very standard for people to come in and sit for the full length of the entire panel session. So you will be side by side with other presenters and they may or they may connect, they may not connect. It depends on the type of conference where you may randomly be stuffed together with other oral presenters or there may be a narrative amongst you all. And so, um, you know, I think the nice thing about oral presentations, you have a little bit time. 
little bit more time. But the fact is, is whether you do oral or post a presentations, you do not have enough time to say everything about your research. Something gets left out. And so you have to make decisions about how it is you tell that story. Sometimes with oral presentations, we oftentimes, and it depends again, it's field specific, we're oftentimes using it as a place to also practice out some of our uh, things that we would like to say in a journal article. So this is before it's made its way into a journal article. And so you're kind of practicing the arc of what would generally appear in a journal article. Um, and so um, that's usually common standard, usually for research at a presentation conference, you don't usually present on um, already published works. It is works in progress. And so it may vary from very early stages of research to it is almost done. You are, the article is there, it is ready to hit submit. Maybe you've submitted it and it's not been published. So they're just very genre different. And so that's what I would say about the difference with those. Um, I wanna also um, invite Ava, did you wanna add anything to that? No, I think that pretty much covers it. I think it's just important to be aware of the options that you have. So if you could take advantage of, of any of these links, uh, that would be a great idea. It's always a good idea to, to represent yourself in your field. Yeah, great. Um, so let's open it up to questions. We have folks here in the audience. If you want to chat, uh, go ahead and use a chat feature. You may also just go ahead and do the typical raise your hand and I'll go ahead and call on you. Or you can do the typical unmute yourself. Ava was very in tune with that. She saw me unmute myself and thought I wanted to say something. And I was like, oh, no, I was just readying myself for the next slide when I came up. So I wasn't looking for my unmute button. But yeah, so let's see. Anyone have any questions about presenting? Use the chat feature raise your hand or just unmute yourself. Well, let's give you a moment. Questions. What happens if you withdraw from attending a national conference because your research isn't ready? Oh, I wish you didn't withdraw um, <laughs> because most research is never, is always in progress. So my recommendation would be is you just need to reframe your presentation. So when you're withdrawing, you really um, then are saying you just aren't in a place to present. So usually when I've withdrawn from a conference, it's not because I wasn't ready to present or because I didn't have uh, something in progress. It's because something, there was a crisis in my life, right? Something happened that prevented me from actually showing up to the conference. I think we recognize recognize at conferences that we are at all stages of our research. And I think that the more explicit you are about where you are in the stage of research, then the more understanding your audience will be. They will say, yes, this is early stages. You are doing great. Keep going, right? Um, but if you um, are um, experiencing anxiety about, um, you know, presenting in itself and you're just like, uh, you know, I think it raises some of the things a lot of students might use the frame um, phrase imposter syndrome. Um, and that's really um, common, I think, across your, uh, I, I hate to say it to you folks, but it actually doesn't go away. Even when you are a, veteran colleague professor, right? You actually experience like, oh, you know, this kind of sense of your, um, you know, uh, they'll find you out. Um, but the truth is, is just you actually know your research the best. And especially if it's in its early stages, then just frame it that way. And I've done that with students where they were early stages of the research. We um, hadn't had IRB approval um, completed. Um, it was like still like in that pending. It was like out to IRB. And so we ha actually hadn't collected data. So what we did is the student just presented on those preliminary findings of literature review that they had done. They presented on the questions, the instruments that they were um, working on, and they could get feedback on that. And so, yeah, it's I. that's what I would say um, is that there is um, all research that is always in a stage of um, to be uh, to be improved, to be bettered. Even research that is so-called complete is actually still in progress because we start to find out, hey, you know what? There are questions we didn't ask that we should have asked. There were areas that we should have investigated that we should have investigated. And so actually all research even when it is quote unquote complete is in progress. So that's how I would answer that. Ava, do you wanna say um, anything about withdrawing though um, uh, along those lines? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd love to add that I think one of the most impact, I've, I've been able and fortunate enough to present at around five or six conferences at this point in my research career. And one of the most impactful conference experience that I had was when I had just a methodology. Um, I did not have any results. I had a poster full of all of the things that I had done to get to the point where I was going to start to run experiments. And the reason why it was the most impactful is because I had so many people from across different intersections of 
of the field that I was working in tell me, oh, did you consider this? Did you consider this? And I could consider it because I hadn't yet started experimentation. So I highly encourage that even if you don't feel that you have quote unquote, and I, I don't believe in this, but enough results to present, that's not a thing. You should always present. You should always take up those, those connection opportunities. Yeah. And then if you're feeling like maybe your mentor is getting on you um, because and you're like, oh, there it, it feels like the, the suggestion is I'm not ready. Right. Or they're worried I'm about I'm not ready. Right. Then you can have that conversation about different stages of research. And I think that maybe one of the things is just to remember that your mentor just wants the best in you. So we're always going to push our students. We're going to push you to be better and better and better. Right. Um, that's how research is. So, I mean, um, you know, um, don't personalize when you're getting feedback that's suggesting there's holes in the project. Because you know what, there's holes in all research. There is no such thing as a publication or presentation that can cover everything. There is no presentation there. It just does not exist. Nothing is it about everything, right? Um, th that's just not possible. Um, yeah, great question. Are there any other questions that folks might have before you go on to a national conference, whether it's NCUR or another conference? Other questions? Great question. And um, while we're waiting for some questions, I just want to go ahead and mention that um, myself as an undergraduate research leader and all of the other wonderful undergraduate research leaders are available for contact and appointment on the undergraduate uh, or the Office of Undergraduate Research website. So I highly recommend that if you want to talk to somebody who's kind of been through it and is more um, in, in the same place that you are, we're always here to talk to you. Um, you can schedule an appointment. There's information on the website. Yeah, so you can find that information here. You can see, you can visit our.utah.edu. You'll see that there's a wonderful link on research advising or how to get started. And in the how to get started, it also links up to our leaders or just in the about us. So you'll find our leaders in many places on our website. Um, you can email our at utah.edu. Um, and thank you, Jude, so much for plopping in a research advising link there. Um, that's really helpful. Please do connect with a peer. You can also call the office. You can join our listservs, um, which we need to update our presentations now because we are now moving not to listservs, but actually we are going to use um, a different form. And so uh, we look forward to continuing to update you with information. Thank you folks for joining us. Uh, congratulations. Um, please fill out the form um, and congrats again on presenting. Thank you, Ava, for sharing your insights and experiences. We wish you all the best. Know that no matter what happens, you can always reach out to the Office of Undergraduate Research. We want you to succeed in your presentation. You will succeed. You're going to do your best. And just by doing your best, it's going to be great. And just try to have fun. Don't forget to have fun. I really want you to remember, have fun, do your best, um, and tell us about it. Share it, tag us in social so we can share it with others. Jude's really great on being on social, of resharing that stuff. So please share it with it, it with us about your experiences as well. We want to make sure we tell everyone else about your wonderful experiences. But if things go bad or go awry, know that we're here too. We want to make sure we're supporting you. So take care of yourselves. Congratulations. And we will see you all at the next education series event.